The TV show Extreme Makeover featured contestants whose looks are changed in an effort to transform their lives and make their dreams come true. This was accomplished through the skills of doctors, a plastic surgeon, an eye surgeon, and a cosmetic dentist, along with a talented team of hair and makeup artists, stylists, and personal trainers known as the Extreme Team. At the end of each episode, the participants return to their friends and families to reveal their new looks to their loved ones, who are not allowed to see the incremental changes during the process. We at Typewriter Minutes recently found a tired, old, dull typewriter that was really in need of an extreme makeover. This is Eli from Typewriter Minutes. Today we are doing a review of a 1955 silent super in a stunning alpine blue. We picked this up locally and when we got it, it really was closer to gray than it was to blue. It was a uh, Pretty darn filthy inside and out. We've given it a complete cleaning, complete disassembly, and it's turned out very well, I would say. There were a couple things wrong with it when we got it. The, the ribbon drive system needed repair. I got that working. The uh, bunny ears paper support were totally bent forward. I think what happened was somebody had it in the case and they closed the case and it bent these up so that they were sticking straight up. Uh, this part here was all bent. The little, the bottom part of this, which you can't see, which screws into the, the back plate, it was all bent. So I had to take that out, form it, and uh, I think it turned out very well. Had a couple little paint chips which we've touched up and you can barely see them. I'm not going to tell you where they are because you have to really look for them to notice them. And it's kind of unusual to see this alpine blue in such a blue color. Most of them I've seen are washed out. In fact, this one was kind of washed out when we got it, but it cleaned up really well. As part of our extreme makeover, we took off all the body panels and gave everything a good chemical clean. Here you can see the old tired blue compared to the new bright exciting blue. It really was an extreme makeover. It also had some big ugly paint chips. We mixed up some paint, and boom, matchy matchy. They were gone. We also made some uh, rubber grommets for the body, panel, and the frame, which I'll explain in a few minutes to keep the machine nice and quiet. Again, part of the makeover. We've already done a review of Sam's Desert Sand Silent Super, but we thought this one deserved its own review because look at that blue. Okay, what do we have here then? So, it has the ribbon reverse lever right here so you don't have to open up the hood. It has a dedicated one and exclamation mark key. It has a standard QWERTY keyboard. It has a tabulator, tab clear and tab set. A ribbon change color thingy. Ribbon color selector. And a shift on each side. It's a basket shift and it has a caps lock. Uh, so it's really nice and light on the pinkies for that basket shift. Okay, we'll pop open the hood. And again, there's the basket shift. It's got a new black and red ribbon on it. Oop, my finger's covering the camera. It's got a new black and red ribbon. Everything in there is nice and clean. I did put uh, eyelets on the ribbons because you need them for the auto reverse when it gets to the end of the spool. Eyelet comes out, triggers this fork or that fork, and so you don't have to worry about the ribbon. But if you want to do it manually, that's what this guy over here is for. Oh, yeah, this was not working when I got it either. I had to repair that. And it's got the nice foam, not foam, felt insulation here and on the sides. So they did, I believe, put more soundproofing in this model than some of the other 
models like the Sterling of the same vintage. Ooh, look at that blue. Okay, so over here we got the platinum knob, carriage release lever. We got one of those on each side. Listen to that bell. Right here is the carriage lock, so when you're ready to put it in the case, you just flip this up and it stops dead center. That way it's nice and centered when it goes in the case. Uh, we have push and slide margins for the right and the left. This little back panel, oop, here we go. This little back panel flips back so you can see the some of the innards there, the tab rack and some of that good stuff. And here's the bunny ears. Smith Corner logo looks really good. You can see a little bit of the touch up there. This is kind of an ugly metal brownish and it looks a thousand percent better than it did before. So I fibbed, I did tell you where some of the touch up is. Here's the little line space variable, uh, variable line space, you pull that out and then you can put the platen on whatever line you want for typing, push it back in, then you can hear the clicks. What do we have up here? The one, two, three is? It sh you can choose how many lines you want it to go down when you pull this. So single space, double space, triple space. Uh, one thing I like about this is that the ruler behind here is blue. So blue to match the blue paint and this back here is also blue. So really cool color scheme. Here's a little paper guide. You can slide it left and right. I always keep it on zero. It's got the mm, magic, no, what's that called? Not the magic margin, it is the, it'll come to me in a minute, page gauge, it's the page gauge. If you look at our video on Sam's Sand uh, Silent Super, we'll show you how to use the page gauge. Actually, we'll show it to you now, hold on. Okay, here's how the page gauge goes again. If you're typing on eight and a half by 11 paper, which most of you will be, you put this on 11 for the length of the paper. And here's another little flip up doodad that releases the line spacing so you can put it to exactly where you want. So you line up this little line under the 11 with the top of this little plate where it says set. Flip your lever, so now it's clicking. And if you leave it on 11 and feed your paper in, By the way, this has, oh, back up cameraman. Let's try it again. Feed the paper in. This has the little paper fingers, which you can slide in and out. If you have a card, you can slide the paper fingers in to hold the card down. Also has the paper bale rollers, the paper bale. So it's kind of neat to have both of those. So now, as you get down and you're typing, when you get towards the end of the page, you'll notice over here, it says end. So you keep an eye on the numbers as you get on the red side where it says end. See, now you have two inches to go to the bottom of the page, one inch to the bottom of the page, and then boom, you're done. So that was their way to let you know how close you were getting to the bottom of the paper before you run out. That's how the page gauge works. My executive assistant will now show you the bottom of the machine and the case. So we'll tip it up on its back very carefully. You see the nice clean underside. It's got the original block rubber feet, which are still nice and gushy. I put little rubber grommets. Uh, there's one in between the screw and the body, and then there's one between the body and the frame, which you can't see. Because when it came out of the factory, it had a rubber grommet that was on both sides of the body. And that helped with, I think, noise dampening and vibration. And so I've 
everywhere that mounts to the frame. I went ahead and did those to help reduce the noise and vibration, and it is a nice, quiet typer. Okay, we'll scooch this over here and then take a look at the holiday case. This is probably my favorite version of the typewriter case by Smith Krona. It's made by uh, Samsonite and they're really bulletproof. It's in excellent shape. It's got the little metal feet on the bottom. It's got one ding here, but obviously it's done a good job protecting the machine. I'll set it down here. They call it the, I love the color of the handle and it just has a nice feel to it when you're holding it. Push and pinch to open it up. They call it the holiday case because it has a bracket that comes out of the case if you flip this little lever. So if you wanted to go on a trip and use your holiday case as a luggage suitcase and have your clothes smell like typewriter, you could do that. Uh, this little doodad here I'll show you in a minute is to get the machine out of the case. And there's a little bracket here which goes into the back of the machine here. And a lot of times you'll see paint scratches and scuffs because people aren't careful when they put the machine in the case. So I'll show you how to do that. You very carefully line up that hole with that little grabby bracket. Push down and you'll hear it click into place. And you know it's locked in because if you lift up the typewriter, the case comes with it. And then when you're ready to take the machine out, flip this little arrow, if you'll zoom in Mr. Cameraman, push it that way, and then out it comes, push it back in. Always make sure to have these bunny ears down when you close the case. I think that's why this was messed up and mangled when I got it. Also make sure your carriage is centered so that you don't break the platen knobs. Very slowly close it. it. Snaps, closes securely. You're ready to go. And now for the type test. I forgot to show a little paper release lever. At least I don't think I showed it. If you put the paper in and it's crooked, just flip this up and then you can scoot your paper. So put the bunny ears up. a little crooked so I'll straighten it out. I recommend two pieces of paper, one original and one backing sheet. I'll start on black setting. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their country. Oh, pardon the typos. Okay, that's the line lock, so you push the margin release when you get to the margin. Let's do another line and I'll scooch the margin out just a little bit so we can get a whole line in. Pardon the typo up there. Oops. single space. One more. shadow. See the typeface is nice and crisp. Type slogs have been cleaned. Alright, now I'm gonna flip it to the red setting. Pass the camera off to my trusty assistant. Do a couple lines on red. The quick red fox jumped over the lazy brown dogs. Oh, 
Man, I'm having a rough time today. Typos. I'm kind of in an awkward typing position because the typewriter and table are a little too low. Okay, now we'll do an alignment test because I did adjust the alignment yesterday. Pass this back off. nice typing feel to it. Smith Corners are one of my favorite typers. The ergonomic keys just fit my fingers really well. I love the feel of the return arm. It's just solid as a rock. One of my, one of my maybe top three typing machines. Finish up this review of our 1955 Smith Corona Alpine Blue Silent Super with some pros and cons. Here are the pros. Stunning blue color, the amazing typing feel, a relatively quiet typer, it has the solid holiday case, it has a key set tabulator. Oh, stop there. I forgot to show, it has a little window down here, it shows you where you are. So right now I have the tab set every 10 spaces, so hit tab 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So anyway, cool little window there that I forgot to show. And it's hobby friendly for cleaning and repairing. So it's relatively easy to get the body panels off. You have easy access to the underside for most or a lot of the repairs. So for a non-professional hobbyist like me, it's a kind of a easier model to work on than some others. Cons, we had a hard time coming up with cons on this one. We had some minor paint chips, which I've touched up. Like you can see there, there used to be one. Very hard to see, so I've, I think I've got it pretty close on the paint matching, but overall it's just a pretty amazing blue color. Again, most of these that you see out in the wild are more gray than blue. And the only other con I can think of, it has kind of a ohm sound. I think it's maybe some of the springs inside vibrating when you type, I don't know if you can pick it up on the speaker. I have that with some of my Smith Coronas. It's not a big deal. You can barely hear it. And so I really had to stretch to think of a negative. Just a really cool typewriter. Thanks for joining us today on Typewriter Minutes. Be sure to share, link, like, and subscribe. Bye.